Now let's start with biogeochemical bio cycles. Now biogeochemical cycle is a pathway by which chemical substances move through the biotic and abiotic compartments of the earth. They are of the following types. That is a nutrient cycling, gaseous cycles and sedimentary cycles. Now in the gaseous cycle, in the nutrient cycle, it is a concept that describes how nutrients move from physical environment to the living organisms and subsequently back to the physical environment. Now the example would be the living organisms creating biomass that is the producers creating biomass in turn being eaten by the consumers of primary secondary and tertiary degree and on their death being decomposed by the bacteria and fungus to be uh, assimilated into the soil and minerals which is then later on the nutrients in the soil is again absorbed by the producers that is plant algae and the cycle continues moving on to the gaseous cycle some of the important gaseous cycles are water carbon and nitrogen cycles now water cycle involves a continuous circulation of water in the earth atmosphere system which is driv driven by solar energy so the major processes involved here is condensation transpiration and precipitation and the rest of it are given the diagram itself moving on to the carbon cycle it involves a continuous exchange of carbon between atmosphere and organisms it is usually a short term cycle respiration decay volcanic actions are some of the factors that add carbon dioxide to the carbon cycle. Now the major uh, reactions involved here will be combustion, respiration, metabolism, photosynthesis and that would complete the carbon cycle. Now moving on to nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen is converted into many chemical forms added as it circulates from the atmosphere to soil to organism and back into the atmosphere. Now nitrogen fixation is accomplished in three different ways by microorganisms like bacteria and blue green algae, by man using industrial processes like fertilizer factories to a limited extent by atmospheric phenomena like thunder and lightning. Now certain microorganisms are capable of fixing nitrogen into am ammonium ions. These are free living nitrifying bacteria. Examples would be aerobic azictobacter and an anaerobic clostridium and symbiotic nitrifying bacteria living in association with leguminous plant and symbiotic bacteria living in non-leguminous roots nodule plants. Example would be rhizobium as well as blue green algae. Examples would be anavina and spirinula. Now nitrification is ammonium ions. In nitrification, ammonium ions are oxidized to nitrites or nitrates by two specialized bacteria that is nitrosomonas bacteria to promote ammonia transformation into nitrite which is then further transformed into nitrate by the bac bacteria nitrobacter. Now nitrification is the special denitrifying bacteria pseudonomonomus convert nitrites nitrates to elemental nitrogen that is N2. Now this is the whole process. The Nitrogen fixing bacteria will convert the nitrogen, free nitrogen into ammonia and that will again be converted by nitrifying bacteria into nitrates and nitrites and which would again be converted into free nitrogen by the process of denitrification. Now denitrification bacteria are given here. Nitrification bacteria will be nitrosomonas and nitrobacter and nitrogen fixing bacteria examples would be given in this box itself. Moving on to sedimentary cycles, now phosphorus and sulphur circulates by means of sedimentary cycles. Now phosphorus cycle, the main storage for phosphorus is the earth's crust. It's, it occurs in large amount as minerals in phosphate rocks and enter the cycles from erosion, weathering and mining activities. Now moving on to sulphur cycle, sulphur is locked in organic that is coal, oil and peat deposits and inorganic deposits such as pyrite rocks and sulphur rocks. It is released by weathering activities. It also enters the atmosphere from sources like volcanic eruptions, fossil fuel combustion, ocean surface and decomposition. While the sulfur cycle is mostly sedimentary, hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide add gaseous components to it. The hydrogen sulfide also gets oxidized into sulfur dioxide which dissolves in rainwater and falls as acid rain. Now this would be the sulfur cycle. 